What's up guys, it is Flex, I am back again on a part 2 on my video series, how to carry, how to carry your game, okay, how to carry your team, <laughs> alright, again, this is a new series for me, people have been asking me in my stream, they won't ask me, can you play this champion, they do, but now the, conv the, the questions are shifting over to how do I carry my game, which is great, because that means my viewers are listening to me. When I stream, I tell my viewers, you know, it's great about, it's it's not all about getting yourself fed. And that's what really changed for me, my mentality. That's when my mentality really changed and my ELO started getting a lot higher. It wasn't specifically, how do I win this lane? And that was it. Now it's how do I win the lane and use that lead to win the game. Because when I was bronze, silver, gold, even in, even in platinum, all I cared about was winning my lane. 30 seconds until and I hate to say it, but my mentality was, as long as I win the lane, I'm good. Because I know if I lose, it's because of my team. That is bad. That's an extremely bad mentality to have, okay? As to quote one of my favorite LCS players, I'm a cutie pie. If you go 19-0, and, and I'll paraphrase, I'll paraphrase. If you go 19 and 0 and you lose the game, it's your fault. Okay? You're the reason they lost. The team lost. And I saw the is the video was from an interview on him years ago. And I recently I saw it maybe a couple months back when I was in silver or whatever. And it or when I was in plat and it changed my mentality. And it, it I definitely saw an increase in um in my performance. So, as always, when I take a top laner with teleport, in this case Fizz versus Darius, I take a camp. You start W level 1, and you start taking camps. Now here's the thing, you buy a flask only, and you go to the wolf camp. Pop your flasks in the beginning, not at the very end like me, I did that wrong. So get your flasks, take the camps. Okay. Next thing you do, Recall, buy a cloth armor. Okay. Because you are going to, I am going against Darius. Granted, he does not have ignite, but still, I mean, it's he's a Darius. So I, 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 gra I grab a cloth armor and a pot. Next thing I do, I go into lane, and like all Darius players, he is shoving. And I'm going to let this minion wave crash into my tower. Alright, things to know when you play against Darius, I will go into the lane matchup here a little bit. Not too much, but I'll, I'll still do it. Alright, things to know against Darius, you want to minimize the amount of free crash you take. Darius is a lane bully. Okay, his one goal is to win lane. Alright. If you manage to win the lane against a Darius, he's going to be extremely useless at the very end. Unless he builds straight tank, and maybe finds a way to grab a carry. But he can be kited, you know. Anyways, going back to the lane phase. You want to minimize the amount of harass you take, and you don't want to fight him unless he's wasted his Q, or if it's on cooldown. And I did a very bad job in not taking harass, but I did have sustained advantage. I have a flask, and I have a pot, so I was like, alright, I should be okay. So I pop my pot, and I'm farming. Farming. I take free harass because I hate Darius. I take more free harass and I start poking him. I auto attacked a minion there, which is pretty unfortunate. But again, I'm potting up. He used this pot. He only has one, so again, like it's annoying because this is what Darius does. Like he'll just Q you and bully you out of the lane. Things to look at here, though. He's low health and low, low mana. I'm lower health, but I have full mana. He also has no pots, and I still have two flasks. So, there are two things to do. You can, I mean, I, you, there's one thing. You need to play it safe. Alright? You need to play it safe and pot up. Once you get your health up, you should be alright. He does have sustain through his door and shield, but pots are better. Alright, so he hits level 5, and I hit level 4. And I'm still level 4, so I'm at a pretty big disadvantage. He wastes his Q there, so I'm just going to walk up and farm. It's no big deal. And... Again, I'm getting harassed. I get an extra auto attack there, which is really bad. 
And another fun fact to remember, when Darius has his bleed on you, and he runs under tower range, he will tank tower. Now, he got a little cocky here, and I wrecked him. Okay, he probably didn't see that I had ignite, so of course I take full advantage of that. He's taking a tower shot before he even fights. There, he's taking tower shots. Okay, I predict the pull, I predict the pull, playful trickster. Pop Ignite while I'm still in Trickster, and then just WQ, and he gets wrecked. Okay, I thought it was a nice little play. It's actually on one of my YouTube videos, it's a fizz out play. I, I liked it. I, I got a little hyphy for it. Because I hate Darius players. Alright, so I recall, I, I have enough for my, my Sheen, so I get the Sheen. And now, I'm looking to fight a little bit. I'm just farming here. I do have a Sheen advantage, and I fight him. Really easy. Okay, Darius at level six, not that scary. If you have, if you know you cannot damage him. Now, well, I mean, playful tricks is really nice to have too. So I just throw the shark out. This is what I mean. This is not a D fizz. This is attack speed fizz. We're gonna count the autos that I can deal before he, like, while he deals his. So that's one, two, three. He still has an auto on me once. Four. He did cancel his auto, so it's four to one. Five to one. Five to one autos. Okay. Attack speed on Fizz is what makes it really strong. AD is just there to help you with farming, honestly. Your Q does proc on hit effects, so I call that an auto attack. Same thing as the Darius W. Farming Darius TPs, which is fine. My ignite's gonna be up soon, so I don't mind fighting him here, actually. My shark's gonna be up soon. He's already pretty scared of me now, and that, like, the lane's pretty much over. Ping your Mias, especially on a Darius, because Darius can make ganks pretty simple. A summoner has disconnected. Oh, he DC'd. Didn't know that. Oh, you reconnected. Alright, next thing I go for is my Phage. The Phage is nice to get because health and AD. And I'm looking to fight him again. I mean, it's just, it's just not enough, you know? I have no respect for this Darius. He's building tank, which is great, but I do a lot of magic damage. So I throw out the shark, get two auto attacks before he gets one. Three auto attacks to two. He even gets a Shen ulti. That doesn't stop me. And I was tanking minions there. Tank Darius excels in extended fights there, but with Fizz Burst, it goes down pretty quick with Ignite, even with the Shen shield there. But again, this is more focusing on how to help the team. My team rotates bot, so what do I do? I rotate mid. Okay, your you and your mid laner should basically be acted like a rubber band here. If your mid laner goes bot, you need to act like a rubber band and go mid lane and apply pressure in the mid lane. Okay. Oh, we're back. I'm gonna be farming. I have my zeal components, but again, this I have no respect for this Darius whatsoever anymore. I'm gonna be able to harass him freely. Yeah. My shark's up. My ignite's gonna be up in like 20 seconds. So what do I do? I just farm, ignore him, and start fighting. I gave him the benefit of the doubt there because I, I went ahead and ignored him because he flashed. Got his flash, I'll fight him again later. But these this is one of the ways that you can disengage messages. Okay. Which is cool. You can use your Q to engage. In this case I use it to dis disengage. Now this is me explaining individual mechanics on Fizz. Like things you can use him for, which is pretty cool. Throw the shark. He burns flash. And right here. He can do a few things, Darius. If he lands a really good pull, he's gonna tank you within tower range. So what I do is I Q their minion and get outside of range. Okay, you know what I mean? Just a little tip. And whatever, I'm farming. Dive him and kill him. I guess I'll show the kill there. I just poke him to death. I use my E to draw off aggro, and that's it. A 
applying the pressure in the top lane to the point where Zareth has to come roam. <clears throat> now I'm fighting this, I'm running away from this Darius because my shark is enough, but once he gets too close and starts taking my minions, then I turn the fight. He's got the full stacks, misses the Q, because I do have my, um, my phase. I actually don't know why he didn't catch up. But, you notice how I was able to lose the stacks from the Q? I was at full max stacks, and boom, I lose them. As soon as you lose the stacks, I went back into fight. If he had five stacks on me when he dunked me, I was dead. But again, when you're against Darius, you can see right here on the bottom hemorrhaging and you can see when it fades away okay boom see the little timer about to go gone gone come back in get wrecked taking my minions especially the cannon minion boom that's how it's done all right all right finish the triforce Darius is 0-5 without a single item finished. He is combat ineffective. Okay. I'm going to keep applying pressure on the top lane. Now you're going to notice that in my Jax game I roamed a lot. But with Fizz, I went ahead and stayed in the top lane. Because I simply could not be soloed. And with Fizz, you can definitely 2v1 here. Which is what I do here. Give this guy the shark. He gets wrecked. And I start poking this guy. You see... That's that's what you want as this top. You want to get 2v1 and you want to be able to win the 2v1. Sure, Yasuo came in to help, but like, let's be honest, that, that dude is dead. Okay. And I go back top lane to farm. I brought Varus and Zerath top that time. Finish the Triforce, finish the Blathering King, and I go back top lane to apply pressure. You can do the same thing as Jax, alright? But if you notice, my, my team was doing really well. My team was taking dragons, Yi was getting fed, Yastro was getting fed. So my job is to apply the pressure here, okay? Another way to escape ganks, right here. I'm 2v1ing, so what do I do? I let Shen get in front of me, Q through him, and just dash away. Playful tricks away, really easy. I knew Zareth was here somewhere. So I went ahead to try and find him. Now I'm applying pressure on the mid lane. Oh, dragon's up? Cool, I'm gonna take dragon up. Darius isn't gonna do anything. What do I do? Pick camps. Our mid lane, put pressure on the mid lane because I knew they were fighting bot lane. And I'm taking mid lane with my trap force. Pretty rough fight here because I didn't have my, uh, what do you call it? Couple things. One, I didn't have CDR. Two, they had Shen ultimate. And, yeah, I'll pin it on those two. They had Shen ulti to save the Sona, and my CDR wasn't high enough so that I can playful trickster. Again, that fight. I only playful trickster once. So after that, I completed my CDR boots and my Glacial Shroud for the CDR. So that put me at 25% CDR. Again, this is my smurf, so I don't have any fizz runes. All I have are attack speed, armor, and MR. That's all I have. Which is why I'm only using Jax, Fizz, and Aurelia because I don't run any AD on those champions. Coming back to the top lane to apply the pressure. Once I see I bring two people up, cool. I wait for somebody. That's what I did here. Got away there too. Pretty much just buying time for the bot lane there. See if they can get it shoved in, but they couldn't at the time, so it's a pretty useless fight there. Uh, it was a careless play on my part. And he gets wrecked. Ways to engage his fizz. Q a minion, the gap close, and then playful trickster. Just like that. And that dude is dead before the ulti even comes across. I was pretty annoyed at Sona by the by this time, so I just wanted to kill her. I think I died here, but I killed the Sona because I was very annoyed 
said Sona. Yes, I, that's exactly what I do. I get, I come out on the side, I throw my shark in the pillar. He's got the exhaust. I'll call worth on that. Going back top lane to apply some pressure. Master is like going off right now, so I get a, put some pressure off of him so that when he team fights, he can carry the team fight. Now applying pressure, bringing three people up here. And that's not gonna save his life. Four people. Interesting. Uh, that's one of the. Inf that was actually. I mean, we killed Varus, so I mean, I guess it was worth a little bit. Uh, but that's one of the things you need to avoid. And after that, I, right after that happened, I upgraded my trinket. Okay, because you want to apply pressure, but you don't want to die for nothing. If I had proper wording there, I would have run away and not fought that because I saw there were four people there. You know. So my carelessness, carelessness and misplay caused us to lose the team fight. If I had wards and saw there were four people there, I would not have tried to fight that. I would have baited it, but I would have left eventually. I knew it was warded. Anyway, they killed the Sona. I was very happy because that Sona was annoying. Okay, let me explain this teleport, by the way, because you're going to notice that I teleported and I canceled it. Okay. Now... This is a little more advanced, and I don't suggest it unless you absolutely know what you're doing. But let's go ahead and look at Draven, who is shoving out the bot lane, and let's look at my teleport. When you teleport to a minion, it becomes invulnerable, meaning it cannot die. But the turret will still draw aggro onto that minion, meaning I teleported, the minion stayed alive, and the tower stayed distracted while bot lane was killing it. So that's exactly why I teach. Did I have to? No, not really. But I just wanted to explain in a video because I knew I was recording this and I wanted to explain a little utility use for your teleport. All right, so my team's taking bot lane. I'm pushing top lane. Okay. I'm ignoring this Darius. I'm level 18. He's level 16. He doesn't deal too much damage to me because I have my frozen heart completed. So I'm still here applying pressure. I believe they forfeit here. Yes, they do. Again, I let him get behind me after he pulls me. And I, let, I walk behind him so that when he does we'll take a step forward, I'm able to Q right through him out of range, just like that. And then I blade him. And I dodge his dunk. Because Fizz is such a troll. I even pressed. I even start recalling. Oh, that was so trolly. That's not nice. That was not nice at all. And there's a forfeit. Alright, so. An ignorant person would say, Flex, you did nothing that game. All you did was get fed and you stayed top lane. A wise and very smart person would say, Flex, you did great. You stayed top lane, you drew one, two, three, even four people onto you, and which allowed your Master Yi and your bot lane to control objectives like dragon and take towers and kills. See? See what I did there? Kappa? Anyways, that's exactly that's exactly what your goal is. Okay? You could do two things. You can group and effectively use teleport or you can stay top and split push and still wait to effectively use your teleport. Would, could I have teleported some of these fights? Sure. Did I? No. Wanted to keep blind pressure. As Fizz with Playful Trickster it's a lot easier to 2v1 than someone would, like, say, Jax. Jax has his dodge, which is a little advantageous in most 2v1 scenarios, but so is his playful trickster. So in that scenario, I want to split push and force 2v1 fights. I mean, 
four v one fights, not so much. But yeah, that that's another way how you can carry your team. If you use an auto attack based champion with Triforce, Fizz, Jax, Aurelia, pretty much. I'm sure there are others, but those are all I'm going to think about right now because those are who I use. Shen is another strong one, but Shen, people normally just build straight tank on Shen and don't really build Triforce. I still have to tr even try Triforce play the ranking on him, but we're drifting off subject. Here, I helped my I helped carry my team by relieving pressure from other regions of the map. Specifically, Dragon and bot lane. Okay. I, I, at one point, on multiple occasions, Sona was top. At one point, Varus was top. Zareth was top. Four of them were top. I mean, like... I mean, I hate to say it, but this is... I mean, that's, that's a win for you. If you can get more than one person to come top lane to deal with you. Okay? It's a win. But again, know your limits. <laughs> okay? Yeah, I can 2v1, but I cannot 4v1. Alright, and that brings me to warding. Warding, extremely important. If you're pushing, if you've already taken their inner tower, ward up. Okay? It's nice and all, it's nice and all to get four people to come top to handle, like take care of you. And your team does whatever they want everywhere else. But it would be a lot better if you did not give them a free kill. Like that. Okay? I kind of got bailed out because they were able to kill Varus. Alright, well... This is my second video in my series of how to carry your game. My score was 9-4-2, and two, but I can make an argument on how I did better this game than the Jax game where I had like 28 kills. Okay. Because you can carry with 28 kills, and you can carry with 9 kills. Okay. Mentality. How do I help my team? Okay. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope the main point gets across. Any questions, as always, leave them in the comment section and I'll respond to them immediately. Good luck. And again, for the first 15 minutes, put yourself ahead of the team, sure. Maybe 10 minutes. But as soon as you get your first item, maybe you, get, you take the tower, start focusing on how you can win the game as a team. Okay. Thank you very much for listening to me. Good luck.